Hello and welcome to my video and uh, if you aren't already subscribed then please do so. Um, it means if you've got notifications on then you'll uh, receive uh, a notification that I've actually posted a video and I do share them fairly regularly. So you will note from behind me that I now have, it's been all changed really, I've changed the wall to include some of the Edgelands work now because uh, if you follow me on social media you'll have seen me share uh, my Edgelands paintings which are not completed uh, and have been uh, in the naughty corner for a while as I call it. So I left them alone uh, for a good few weeks now and now I'm going back to them and so as I usually do all of these works here are all studies that were done on location and I have this Constantina sketchbook as I do for all my subjects so I've got this is one of the six ones, if you've uh, seen some of my others, this is uh, the Edgelands Constantina that I did with pre-collaging it and then going out on location. And these are studies done in the studio. So I kind of surround myself with these and uh, some of these also were done as warm-ups and I will be doing more warm-ups so that I keep loose when I'm working on the paintings. So anyway, I just thought I'd come on here, say hello, and then what I'm going to do now is turn the camera around, go to the other side of the room, so I can talk to you about the uh, six paintings that I've got of the Edgelands. Uh, what I'm wanting to do, as I was explaining, is to just sort of review where I'm at with these Edgelands works. And so these two are both the A1 pieces. So I've got four square pieces that are 50 by 50, that I'll talk about in a little minute. And I've got these two A1s and it always, it made sense to me to have them this format as a portrait format. It was just the way I was thinking about the walls, even though quite a few of my works on the wall, as you just saw, are actually the other orientation, landscape format. But anyway, I have these two and what I thought I'd do is uh, just turn around and just take you through really the sorts of notes that I've made about these two pieces and why it is that they have been in the naughty corner for so long. And I'm actually, um, what I should say at the beginning now is that I'm really glad that um, once I'd worked on these quite a lot, I put them aside because I really didn't think I could make that final jump to the, to the, to the finish point. Um, there was something about them that I just needed to leave them. I needed to let things rest. I needed to let myself kind of percolate the sorts of ideas and thoughts and so coming back to them is actually quite um, interesting and quite useful um, and I'm quite happy now. I was a little bit, for the last couple of months I've been a little bit edgy about, I've kind of had these at the back of a table, these uh, works, and I could just sort of see glimpses of them occasionally and I just thought oh I've got, you know, I've got to go back to those works. But once I put them on the wall, which I had in the other room, uh, and then bring them in here now, it's made me realise that actually that um, downtime was actually really helpful. Um, it just let them rest. It meant that I wasn't sort of trying to push things beyond where they wanted to go at that point in time and where my head was at that point in time. Um, and so I think there is a real value sometimes. I mean, it doesn't always work out like that. But I just felt that I tried to push things and I tried to push things and I got to a sort of a stopping point and I just thought I just needed to put them aside and then come back to them. And I think you get a feel sometimes for whether or not you need to just keep pushing on, which I kind of have been doing for, with most of my Heather Moore's ones, apart from one that's now gone into the naughty corner. <laughs> um, but you just kind of get a feel as to whether or not you can push on through or whether you need to just leave them for a while. And so anyway, back to these. So these two A1s, I actually think for me, I've got into the habit now a little bit more over the last month or two of sort of identifying something that I hang my hat on with each painting. Now that might be a word it might be a feeling, it might even be a title, or it might just be in my head, this is what this painting is about. And I just find that really helpful. Um, I just have to be careful that I don't push it in too much of a representational direction. So if I turn around and just, um, sorry about the back of my head, but at least then I can just look at these paintings as I'm talking and you can hear me. 
Um, so this one really has always been about the stone walls with the tangle of stuff around them. And so it's that kind of glimpse of stone, glimpse of tangle. And that's really what it's kind of about. Um, and I like this format because it enables me to get quite a kind of a nice angle. It's not obvious. It's not like a long painting of a long wall. That's it's kind of there's something about it that that sets a bit of tension up. So this is what this one is about. And then this one, I've always been really fascinated by when you're walking along a path in this part of the world and you've got the edgeland for want of a better phrase the stone wall and then beyond it you've got the field it's always fascinated me how you look along that sinuous wall and off into the distance and how massive it is close to you and how it kind of trails off to this tiny little snake and then if you sometimes glimpse through the wires of that of that wall and there's wires above the wall, you kind of see the whole of the landscape, the whole of that huge landscape, massive landscape, kind of literally fitting within one of the wire, the two wires that are up and above. And it's that whole thing around distortion of, you know, things being in the distance, things close to you. And so this one for me is all about that idea of that wall um, going into the distance, even though, you know, I'm not trying to make it too representative, but there is that feel of that thing. And so that's what that one is about. So, you know, it's semi-abstract where it is. I've, I've always, with this group of works, I'm not convinced you can go from being relatively representational all the way over to being completely abstract in one swoop. So I'm not, being too judgmental about how, within reason, um, how abstract I'm being, um, but that isn't that. What I'm really after is to get a feel for this. I want the feelings of the of the edgelands to come across in these paintings, and this brings me then to the next thing. So, in general, both of these, what's working, and it's true of the other four as well, is that it's, I did this sort of little review where I was like, well, what's working out of all of these and what isn't working? And then specifically, you know, you can then look at the, each individual painting. So what's working for me at the moment generally is the energy. Um, and I think there's a sort of a sense of movement in these. And um, as I was talking when I developed the small pieces, it's that fact that they're not sort of straight they're kind of angles and there's lots of tangles be it these big loops or be it the finer lines and the way that the line work is working the sort of spidery lines I think add to that energy and the angles add to the energy so that's what I think is working what I think isn't working is I think they're too busy um, I think there's a question over the green in some respects. Um, I might just add to the green, I might minimise the green. It's not so much in these two, but in general, um, it's there's a question over the green. But for this one, for me, everything is too samey. Everything here is samey. This bit is similar to this bit, is similar to this bit. There's too many hoops and loops and they're too, even though I said there's energy, they're too static. So I want something so, for example, this piece here is not dissimilar to this piece here. I don't need all these, everything drooping. So I think that could come off. I think I could be much more sort of loose and tangled here rather than this very, quite sort of static whirly line. So there's things around that that I'm, you know, keen to change. Um, I think that's a little bit too tight. That's my, my judgment on that one. And then with this one... I think I just need to simplify. I think with all of these, I need to simplify and emphasize things. And so this one, I need to simplify so that it's a bit cleaner. There are things in this one that I don't actually think do anything. Like there's a bit here that is just adding to stuff that doesn't need to be there. So that will be taken out. I think things need to be clarified and simplified um, and emphasized as, as, as I go through. So kind of that's where I'm at with those two. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll put the four on the wall and talk to you a little bit about those. Okay, so here are the four. Now I know that you can't see this one quite as, as well. So once I've 
reviewed those two, I'll swap them over. Um, so I think, you know, this, it's the same applies really to these. I think I'm happy that the fact that they do have a feel of energy and movement, which I'm kind of happy with. Um, I also think that the angles are working quite well. What is true of all of them, though, more or less, maybe not that one, is that they are too busy. There's a lot going on in them. And although I've got breathable space, I'm not sure that's working quite as I want it yet. So this one in particular, um, massive, huge sort of shape. And I did want this to be a kind of a zoom in of the wall. So I said to you that they each have a kind of a, a sort of a focus. So this is definitely um, more about the wall than anything. Um, but I don't know yet how I'm going to resolve that. It's far too sort of in your face. It's far too, it's taken up far too much space. It needs simplifying. So that's that one. This one, I really like the quirky angles, but again, it does need some sort of simplification. And so this one is really about how the, the in the autumn time, actually. So these, I'm now getting a bit of a distinction with some of these between whether they're what time of year they are, having gone through quite a few seasons now, well, gone through all of the seasons now um, with, with, you know, looking at the wall. So all the walls and what happens, you know, with the planting. So this one is definitely that autumn feel of those, as is that one. Um, so these are all of the sort of brambles and the, and, and the um, seed heads coming around the, around the, the wall. Um, but again, that needs to be simplified. Um, and if I just jump and put, swap them round so you can see. So I'll just swap them so that you can just see those bottom ones. So I can just talk to you about those. So this one is also about, very much about the, the autumn. But what the focal point of this one is, is although the stone wall is there, that is sort of more dim, more sort of in the background, if you like. And the whole, what I want this one, I think, to be about is more the tangle of stuff that goes around the wall. So that's what all of this paraphernalia is about. Um, this one is different, different season. This one definitely... Um, and when you saw me at the beginning with those, some of those images in the background, this is definitely in the summer when the cow um, parsley is, is when, the, when the sort of umbellifera is all of the sort of cow parsley and everything else um, is all out and you've got all of that sort of frothy white flowers and things going on around the wall. So that's what that one will become, I think, because I was very taken with the fact that the, the wall gets very camouflaged by the white frothy umbellifera flowers in the summer. Um, and you get this sort of real sort of contrast between a sort of white soft fluffiness and then this dark harsh stones of the wall. So a lot of these are about that combi you know, that sort of positioning of the organic, inorganic, you know, the, the, the static sort of strong nature of the stones and, and um, very flat, but very interesting and quite and, and textured, but against the sort of like the, the organic nature of the planting around. So that's what that one is going to be about. So I think all to say really, because otherwise I'm just going to be, um, you know, talking about them forever really, is that I really want to, for all of these, I want to sort of emphasise and clarify what each of them is about in the way that I continue to paint them. So the thing is to simplify and to um, introduce some of the things that I think are missing in terms of the looseness and just to keep it really loose, actually. Um, but also to sort of, in a, simplify, in a simplification, also emphasise the things I really like and want it to be about, if that makes sense. And as for the green, there's still a question in my mind about how this green is working and whether I add some other green, it's a flatter green because this is quite limey, or what I will do probably might depend on the actual painting. So I haven't decided that yet, but I thought it would just be helpful for me to sort of just go through with you how I'm thinking about these um, as a way of, uh, you know, sort of reviewing before I kind of move on with them. And I want to keep it really loose and I'm going to do some things around um, keeping the timing that I work on them quite limited, do some loosening up exercises before I work on them, stand back a lot, move them into different places. And hopefully all of that uh, will um, help me into getting these to the finish line. 
but I just wanted to say thanks very much for watching and please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.